The film's premise takes place in 1899. Dr. Alexander Hartdegen teaches engineering and applied mechanics at Columbia University as an associate professor. In the beginning of the movie, we see he is working on a formula, and David Philby, a friend and co-worker, has to remind him of his five o'clock date with Emma. When Alexander hears this, he quickly gathers his notes and heads back home to get ready. As they are walking, he and David discuss all of Alex's suggestions that the university has turned down. David advises him to make his ideas more practical for people, so everyone can easily understand the purposes. Mrs. Watchett, Alex's housekeeper, greets them when they arrive at his house. After forcing Alex into designer clothes, he departs to meet Emma. At last, he meets Emma. Sorry for the small pause. It took a lot of hard work to find the movies, make the script, and edit them. Little request, please show your support. And they stroll through the Central Park, chatting. Alex mentions his failing health and says he won't be good until they get married. Tearful, Emma says yes to his proposal. After a little searching, he gives her a ring with her birthstone embedded in it. Emma is delighted, but all of a sudden, a man comes over and circles around them. The mugger points his gun at Alex as he tries to defend himself after he asks them for their money. Even though he gives the mugger his watch and wallet, when the man asks for Emma's ring, they refuse to give it to him. The man then tries to snatch it from her and shoots her dead while struggling. As she draws her final breath and passes away, Alex is there to embrace her and call her name. He hugs her lifeless body and sobs incoherently, completely devastated. The scene jumps ahead to four years. As usual, Alex is researching something and writing a formula on the board. Ever since Emma's death, he has been consumed by his work and has not been able to move on. Mrs. Watchett and David are concerned about him. When David arrives to meet him that day, he notices something behind the curtains and asks David to reveal what he is working on. David invites him to dinner after a week and promises to show him his creation. After a week, today finally arrives. This is the first time Alex has dressed up since Emma passed away. Then he pulls back the curtains, revealing a massive piece of machinery behind them. It has numerous wheels and gears, and a chair is embedded in the center. Alex sits on it, gazing at a locket holding an image of Emma. He slowly lowers a lever, covering himself in a sphere of protection. After that, the machine starts up on its own. Alex depresses a last lever, causing the camera to pan in on a pocket watch and show us its hand rotating counterclockwise, as it's clear that Alex is operating a time machine. In an attempt to save Emma on that fateful day four years ago, he has poured his blood and sweat into the machine. The future Alex is seen in Central Park on the day that Emma passes away in the scene that follows. She notices him and comes towards him. Alex is overcome with joy upon seeing his beloved return. With delight, he kisses her and dashes to the closest chariot to whisk her out of the park. In the middle of the city, they dismount from the chariot. Alex instructs her to spend the night at her house. He tells Emma not to be confused and to always remember that he loves her, assuming that the previous Alex will visit her house at night. As promised, he drops her off by the side of the road to get her flowers. Emma is then struck by a car, which kills her once more. Alex understands that he cannot stop Emma from dying that night, no matter what he does. He persists though. He chooses to travel into the future and research futuristic time machines because he thinks that people from the future have undoubtedly figured out a way to change this factor. Entering the machine, he depresses the lever once more, setting the time to 2030. He observes the world around him changing as he moves through time. He comes upon a poster in 2030 advertising the establishment of a lunar settlement. He visits the New York library in the hopes of finding a book on time travel. There, he encounters Vox 114, the librarian in hologram form and is astounded by the state of the art. Vox 114, however, reveals that no such invention has ever been made when he discusses time travel. He believes that he will have better luck in a few years. With hope, he enters the machine once more and goes to the year 2037. The world is completely destroyed in 2037. Because of the lunar habitation program, the moon has been drawn nearer to Earth, making it inhabitable. The body's shifting gravitational pulls on Earth frequently result in earthquakes and tsunamis. The moon's surface now has a large crack due to human habitation. Alex is taken to his evacuation center by two police officers who are in the process of leaving the planet. As he tries to stop them, the ground trembles and splits in half, releasing hot lava. Alex swiftly climbs into his vehicle and speeds off, but in the ensuing confusion, 
he strikes his head on a metal object and loses consciousness. The time machine begins its journey, and there is no way for an unconscious Alex to stop it. At last, he opens his eyes and realizes he's in the year 802,701, quickly shutting down the machine before he passes out once more. His wounds have healed when he awakens in a bed. A young boy approaches him as he's putting on his clothes and the boy runs away. Alex follows the child and discovers that the future humans no longer live on cliffs, but instead have returned to a primitive way of life. With the exception of a girl named Mara, who speaks English fluently, they all approach Alex and gaze at him in wonder. Mara tells the others that Alex is just a lost fool, so they won't kill him, even though Alex claims to be a time traveler. They go by the name of Elois. Everyone heads into their shed when they hear someone honking loudly. He spends the night at Mara's brother Kalen's house. He notices the moon's shattered remnants in the sky. Alex is taken to Mara's time machine the next day. The two observe that there is no damage to it. Mara demands that Alex bring Kalen back to the past. Loud honking in the background is heard before Alex can ask anything. Frightened, Mara rushes to save Kalen, with a bewildered Alex trailing behind. All those in their vicinity begin sprinting towards the cliffs. Alex encounters a beastly creature out of nowhere. They are known as the Morlocks. Suddenly, these creatures come out from the earth and they attack everyone. They tie the people so they can drag them into the ground. As one of them captures Mara and falls into the ground with her, Alex tries to save her, but fails. After they're all gone, Alex tries to find out where the Morlocks take them, but Kaelin informs him that they're not allowed to discuss it with the others when the Eloi are taken. Alex is then led by Kaelin to the entrance of the Morlocks' world. Alex recognizes the cave they descend into as the New York Library. Vox 144's hologram speaks to them from behind. He has endured for all these years because the technology relied on solar energy. Alex asks him what's going on with the world. These days, shocked beyond belief, Vox 114 responds that Elois and Morlocks are the two subspecies of humans that have evolved. The current state of the world is like this. In order to survive, the Morlocks emerge to hunt Eloise. Vox goes on to say that they must follow the breathing in order to enter the Morlock world. After hearing the noise, Kaelin and Alex pursue it until they come to a large statue of a demonic face, the mouth of which opens into Morlock's world. After leaving Kalin outside, he cautiously climbed down underground. When he arrives at the location, he discovers a whole civilization. After that, he slips into a room and unintentionally falls into a pond that is filled with human remains. After that, a Morlock finds Alex and brings him into their leader's chamber. The leader explains that some people sank beneath the earth with nowhere else to go when the moon dissociated. They turned into flesh-eating Morlocks over time. Some, the Eloi, were remarkably able to survive and repopulate on the surface. After years of underground evolution, the Morlocks attempted to return to the surface but were unable. For food and to breed, they began to hunt humans below the surface. The leader also discloses that he can manipulate the thoughts of both Morlocks and Eloise, and that he uses them to maintain the equilibrium of the universe. Additionally, he is able to read Alex's thoughts and is aware that he is a time traveler who wants to bring Emma back. He induces illusions in Alex's mind about his life if Emma hadn't passed away. Seeing Emma and his child playing makes him sad. The leader comes to the conclusion that since fate is a product of human behavior, it cannot be changed by humans. Subsequently, he exhibits to Alex the time machine he had brought into the Morlock world. The leader desires that he return to his origins and not disrupt the current state of social equilibrium. Alex complies silently. But as soon as he turns on the machine, he drags the leader inside as well. The two fight for some time. Alex places him outside the sphere of the machine and turns it on. The leader ages quickly and dies. In the future, he stops the machine once more and notices that the area is full of Morlock's cave, implying that Morlocks are now in charge of the area. Subsequently, Alex returns to free Mara from the cage. The Morlocks become enraged and leap to attack, but Alex causes a significant time distortion by jamming a gear in the machine. The time machine blows up, destroying Morlock's entire world. Alex and Mara escape the cave in time. Alex chooses to stay with Mara after his time machine breaks because he has found happiness here. Vox 144 is shown in the future, educating the LOE youth about human history. Alex takes Kalen and Mara to a location where his former lab used to be. While he is speaking with them, on different timeline misses watch it, 
and David enter Alex's lab and talk about his disappearance. David says that Alex is safe and sound wherever he is and offers Mrs. Watchit to come take care of his house. To support the channel, please like, turn on notifications, and subscribe for more videos.